I had to figure out my schedule. My going to come for the summer months. And I was making out plane tickets. Some worked out just fine. But there was this one in particular that was like threading a needle. And it just wasn't working out. Which a number of different places. And finally I said, all right, St. Anthony, I need some help. I need to find a ticket. Because I had a wedding, I was spoke in, I had to be back there for Sunday Mass. And the wedding out there was Saturday night, I had to be back there Sunday morning. How's this supposed to work? We went around and I said, okay, Sam, if you want to talk about it tomorrow, I will. But I need to find this ticket, I need to find a solution. And And instantly, I was looking at the wrong, in the wrong place. Looked at another angle, found the solution. And I knew it came from Saint Anthony. I said, "All right, we have to talk about you tomorrow." In the course of looking for this ticket, I was thinking to myself, "I know your feast days are in here sometimes, so I took a look at this." Calendar, and it's feast days tomorrow. I don't know. Well, I guess that just kind of figures into the whole thing. All right, so I made a deal. I have to talk about Sam. Uh, wait a second. Hold on. Tomorrow is the feast of Pentecost, the birthday of the church. White Sunday, or Whit Sunday, it's one of the major feasts, your Christmas, your Easter, your Pentecost, and I'm supposed to speak about St. Anthony, now wait a second, you tricked me to this, how am I supposed to justify this, and the more I thought about it, the more it came to me that it made sense. So I started to think about the life of St. Anthony. Many different things you can read about him. There's this great book called The Rich Young Man. He came from nobility, or from riches, anyways, and gave it up. Joined the Franciscans, the Friar Minor. The Friar's Minor. Wanted to give his life over to silence, solitude, and contemplation, away from the world. And one time, on a fluke, a preacher didn't show up. And this group of people waiting for a sermon to be preached. And his superior went over to him and said, Anthony, you preach it. But in obedience, he walked up there. And the most beautiful words came forth. Inspiration is beyond measure. And so he was given that obedience to go out and preach. So he went. That's his life of contemplation. His own wants and wishes. And he went out and preached. He is known. This monk walking around in poor clothes. Franciscans didn't have nice habits. Especially the ones that follow St. Anthony. Because they wanted to promote poverty in their life. That's their spirit. For this simple monk walking out, giving uh, his speeches or his talks, sermons in churches, became, became known as the hammer of heretics. Why? He would hammer them. He would by, by the words that came forth from him. Needless to say, when one stands up for good, you always get enemies. You always get people against you. He went to this one town.
Cornell one time. They wanted to, they were going to preach. And there are people who had some sway on account of money and account of influence, politics, who led people away with that I don't listen to him. And they wouldn't listen to Anthony preach. So Anthony said, all right, I've come here to preach. If you don't want to listen to me preach, I will preach to the fish. He went to a nearby body of water, started preaching, and fish came from this. People saw this, came around, and on account of that miracle, listened to the words that Anthony was preaching to the fish. And out there swimming out there. Pretty amazing. There's another instance where he was given a sermon in the cathedral. And he paused for a moment. He went like he went into some meditative mode. Stayed there for quite a few moments. Then came out to you give the sermon. I believe it was if it wasn't across town, it was in another town. There was a court case happening that was coming to a conclusion. And this man was accused of murder. And he was innocent. But on an account of how everything was set up, it was against him. And so he petitioned God as the sentence was going to be coming, coming out and he was going to be put to death. Petitioned God that God sent him help. He was innocent of this crime. So Andy walked into the courtroom. I remember. Across town in the pulpit. This is what we call the miracle of bilocation, being at two places at once. Walks into the courtroom and said, This man is innocent. And they said, Prove it. They didn't know that. They didn't, they didn't know until later on that he was in the other town as well. Says, okay, I will prove it. Follow me. They follow him out to the graveyard of the man who was murdered. He raises the man to life to point out his accuser. Now, how can a, a man work such miracles? Yes, the man is great, no greater than you or I, they're human beings. What makes them great is the greatness they have accepted, the treasure they have found, the pearl of great price that they hold, the spirit of God who is in them. This same spirit that we see working in the life of St. Anthony, who, by the way, I think he died when he was 34 years old, 35. Not a very old man in comparison. Well, maybe 10 years ago I would have said he was old, but not, not old now. How did it happen that a man who worked so great, great of wonders? And these were just a few of the miracles that he worked. He was to say the conversions of the hearts of the men that he spoke to. It's because he wasn't doing the work, but he was the instrument that God chose to do his work through. And he was a willing instrument. That same spirit that came upon the apostles some 2,000 years ago, comes to us. Did we not have the bishop here just this last week to give confirmation? In a special way, those that are confirmed receive the Holy Spirit. 
enables us to become strong and perfect Christians and soldiers of Jesus Christ. Not building with a sword of metal or some other type of artillery or weapon except the sword of truth. This same spirit is in all of us. If we accept his way, we can't accept it our own way. If there is ever a day and age where we need men to accept Christ and the truth and promote that spirit of truth, which is God, it's now. And if it's not us, my dear friends in Christ, then who? Is it an easy task? It is not an easy task. Is it a worthwhile task? Eternally. If you love me, if, that's a funny little word, isn't it? We've talked about this little word before. If means it's a choice we must make. If you love me, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our abode with him. Fire 
of thy love. Send forth thy spirit, and they shall be recreated, and thou shalt renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O God, who by the light of the Holy Ghost is instruct the hearts of thy faithful. Grant by that same Holy Ghost, we may be truly wise, and ever to rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the Father and the Son of the Holy Ghost.